G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are spectacularly, fantastically, gloriously well. I'm sitting here in the morning sun, beautiful bounce off the table, but I may have to squint the entire time. I don't mind the Clint Eastwood look. Yes, we have yet another third party high-end lens company, photographic company, because this company does cameras as well as lenses. Not that many cameras, but they do a few, and that is Sigma have brought some native Z mount lenses to the Z system. And this is super exciting. Alrighty, well, some people, you know, <laughs> we talk a lot about all these naysayers. I don't know, I do feel there is a, a, a team of trolls out there just delivering us FUD. And one of those ongoing themes that, and I still hear it, and I still hear it, and I kind of think to myself, how can you even, hold a straight face when you sort of decide to type or say these words, that the Nikon Z lens ecosystem is not very good. Not only are the Nikon native Z lenses, and I think we're probably up to 33, 34, 35, We've got these astonishing trinity of 2.8 zooms. We've got glorious 1.8 primes. And now we're starting to get into some exotic primes, the 1.2s. And we've got what I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, the best collection of long lenses in the 400 2.8, the 600 f4, the 800 6.3, and the 400 4.5. We know that the 200-600 can't be too far away because it's been on the roadmap for so long. I'm certainly hoping we see it sometime this year. Once you've got that out, the Z system actually natively already has an astonishing array of lenses. Now, of course, one area that some people might go, well, okay, that's fair enough. How about APS-C and indeed Sigma? Probably the biggest company that everybody was saying, when is Sigma coming to Z natively? Well, they have arrived as of now. And we have some amazing entry level prime lenses. They are a 16mm 1.4, a 30mm 1.4, and a 56mm 1.4. And now what this does is it adds to the actually rather large amount of native Z mount lenses. This is not my full collection of Viltrox lenses. I think I've got about eight of them, but there is a whole range of Viltrox lenses that come in both full frame 35 mil and in APS-C slash DX. So there's a suite of those, 1.8s and 1.4s. We have lenses like this, which is a fully, oh, and the Viltrox lenses, they are fully autofocus, fully automatic aperture controlled. These are proper, fully modernized lenses. And I've got a video coming up very soon comparing the 85mm 1.8 Viltrox with the 85 1.2S and the 85 1.8S and the original 85 1.4. And you'll actually see that, that sure, Viltrox is not on the same level as the S lenses, but they're doing pretty well. So you've got great third party lenses here Viltrox, we've got Lauer as well. For example, this is a, a manual, fully manual wide angle lens. And we've even got Pergear. And I made a video about this lens, which you can check out up here. It's a great little lens, native Z mount. Voigtlander makes lenses, and there are so many more. So if anyone sort of sidles up to you at Camera Club, or I don't know, when you're just out taking some shots and they go, geez, oh, that, that Nikon ecosystem, it doesn't really have a lot of third-party lenses. Uh, well, that is completely not true, and it's just become even more not true, if you could even have such a concept when something's binary. It either is or isn't, but I'm trying to make a point here. So we have two of the biggest third-party lens manufacturers. We now have Sigma, and of course, we've got the Tamron 70-300 to not that long ago as well. Full third-party support is starting to roll into the Z system and two of the largest names in the industry are now in the game. This is a fantastic thing and all Nikon users should be excited because what that does is it says to you, your Z30, here's your Z30 or it might be your ZFC or it might be a Z50. You've now got support from a company as big as Sigma. And these lenses, well, they've been battle tested, which includes the E mount and the L mount and the X mount. I think I'm missing one. Uh, oh yes, the uh, EF mount, and now we have them on 
the Z mount. Now, sure, are these lenses the latest lenses in Sigma's range? No, but they're great lenses. From everything I read, they're great lenses. And of course, if and when Sigma update them, I'm sure that'll flow through to the Z at some point in time as well. There is a huge amount of third-party lenses out there now. When you take into account Sigma, Tamron, and Viltrox, and they've all got access to the electronic protocols one way or another. I don't, I don't know whether Viltrox are licensed or not, but they're doing it. These lenses work. As I said, I've got, I, I don't know, six or seven or eight of them, and I've tested all of them, and they are great lenses considering the price point. Not the same as Nikon's native glass, but very, very close. So worth considering. I mean, the, the, the places where they differentiate is things like, is the weather ceiling there or is the weather ceiling as good? And that's how they're making them more affordable. And that might be fine for you. You might always shoot indoors or you just don't like being out in the rain. That's fine. And then you have great lenses like the Pergear and the Lauer and plenty of other lenses and all the other third party lenses. And then the final thing that I don't want everyone to forget, which is so easy to forget, is adapted lenses. And because the Z mount is the largest and the shortest, it means that we have the most capacity to adapt lenses. Yes, it does. So for example, I have very successfully used the Sony lenses with the Megadap E to Z adapter. I was lent the brand new 70 to 200 by my friend Bruce. He had to go on a birding trip, so he had to take the lens. I didn't finish the video, but that lens is coming back, and we're gonna get that back on Z cameras, Z6 II and on the Z9, and we're gonna show it off how well it works. So adapted lenses, and I know it's not the perfect solution. I know not everybody loves it, but it does. If there's a lens you need, and obviously this comes down to need, because we've got such a massive native ecosystem so if there's something that you need that doesn't exist well i think you're going to go adapt it if you need it for example tilt shift lenses the only way we can get a tilt shift lens on a z camera at the moment is to use the f to z adapter and to use f mount lenses that's fine if you need it you can do it and that's the other point my other point is you have access to every to every 35 mil lens that Nikon has made for the F mount, which is over 100 million lenses. You have access to all of those lenses. There is no shortage of lenses. We now have Sigma on board. Obviously there's a relationship there. We know for a fact that it's true because it's real, it's happened. And if that relationship is there, we can only believe that more will come from that relationship. Now, so far, there is no sign at all that Nikon is planning on making, for example, full frame 1.4 lenses. There's no sign of that. We've got these extraordinary 1.8s and we've got these extraordinary 1.2s. And that's a great system. It, it actually satiates everybody. But if you feel like you need a 1.4, well, there's a great opportunity for Sigma or anybody else to come along with their fantastic full frame 1.4 lenses and create them. Sigma's in the game. This is a fantastic sign for Nikon. And if you are still out there hearing people talking about a lack of lenses, a lack of third party support, or a lacking in the entire lens ecosystem, it is simply incorrect. It is simply not true. There are so many options at this point in time. Now, to the best of my understanding, we don't know pricing exactly at the time of me recording, but I can only imagine that they will be something similar to what they exist for in the other mounts. It wouldn't make too much sense to put too much of a premium on them, but who knows? So pricing, I think, will be commensurate with the same lens in other mounts because it is the same lens. And well, <laughs> We'll see if that comes to pass or not. Of course, these are Sigma's contemporary line of lenses, which are well regarded to the best of my understanding. I've never personally used them myself, but anecdotally, I believe that is the case. All right, well do let me know in the comments below, will you be getting any or all of these lenses for your Nikon APS-C mount cameras, the ZFC, the Z30 or the Z50? Let me know in the comments below. It's your turn to interact. I'd love to hear from you. 
absolutely fantastic. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe. Please share this video, get the love out there. It really helps the channel. And please like, that's fantastic as well. All right, happy shooting. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.